I have a tie on, and I don't know what that means, but it does mean that consumer income comes in higher than expected, up half a percent compared with a three tenths rise in the month of April. Personal spending, two tenths, which is a little bit lower than the forecast, but same as last month. And then the numbers everybody cares about PCE price index flat on the month as forecast, which means the price index goes to 2.6% from 2.7%. Core is up just a tenth as forecast, and core PCE 2.6% on a year-over-year -year basis. Now, what this tells you is that economists are getting very good at forecasting PCE, and the Fed can continue to look forward to lowering rates without giving us a time frame to do so. We've now got jobless claims behind us, continuing claims behind us, going into payrolls next Friday. Have we got a decent picture of what happened in the survey week and how this might come out the other side for payrolls next Friday. Yes, but you can't really use jobless claims the same way you can use the CPI for PCE. Uh, it, it suggests, uh, the, the jobless claims side suggests that there's not been a lot of change in the overall labor market. And so if you think that we're still adding workers at a reasonably strong pace, then you can go ahead and extrapolate that out. Now, one of the things that we end up doing is taking the ISM uh, hiring numbers, uh, hiring plans numbers, uh, to a certain extent, ADP. We won't get into that, Lisa. <laughs> but, but you take all these other indicators and you try to plug them in and, and come up with something. And right now, uh, it's early, but basically economists think that we're going to see something in the 180s range, which is what they forecast last time, and then we got an upside surprise. How long has it been a muddle? I mean, we've been in a muddle for a while where people basically are picking their own narrative and you can get mad at people and say that it's just two their things, which is inflation is coming down and unemployment's ticking up. But it feels a bit like a muddle. How long has it been now? Oh, gosh, about two years. How and coming coming out of the pandemic, uh, and uh, Tom Barkin had a speech this morning, the Richmond Fed president, asking the question of why did everything go wrong, all the models go wrong. And there's a whole lot of reasons why that they can look back on. But they got it wrong, everybody got it wrong. I guess I'm looking at this and I'm saying we're still in a muddle and yet if you were just gonna draw one conclusion from this data that is less uh, predicted than say the PCE, which you say is incredibly predictable, you look at personal income outstripping personal spending. And this is an inflection point where you're starting to see that really shift after people uh, used up some of their pandemic savings, at least according to the San Francisco Fed and some data they put out. Is that significant that personal finances are actually getting better? At this point. Yes, uh, and I'll give you a reason why here. This is a, a surprising number, and people don't forecast this. Uh, wages and salaries were up seven tenths during the month of May, after two tenths in April. Uh, we know uh, from economic history, to the extent it's valid after the pandemic, people tend to spend what they make. So even though the pandemic savings has gone away, people are feeling, if their paychecks are going up, they're feeling like they can spend money, and that's what they appear to be doing. Uh, we don't know if this is if the seven-tenths rises in general or sort of an outlier uh, because we have seen wages trending down, but in this case, um, it's a very strong number that would suggest people can keep spending.